fuck you're gonna snap my bag, bro? Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining me as always. My name is Jim and I'm here to talk cool stuff with you. Today we're going to be taking a look at the RX Delta X Gen 2. This is the second generation of the Delta. Mine is the X configuration. So like the Glock 19X, you get the compact slide with the full length 17 round grip. But the main difference and the main benefit is that these are slimline. So think of stack and a half. Think of your Sig P365s or Glock 48. It's much more like that. Now let's take a quick look inside of the box and see what they give you. Now it's Global Ordnance that imports these into the US and that is generally where you're gonna buy them. You're gonna buy them directly, which I believe is what I did. I can't remember where I ordered it from but I'm pretty sure it was Global Ordnance. I know that I got additional mags from them because that was what I had to do. So you're gonna get a basic Here's a gun, here's how you load it. kind of thing. Inside will be the pistol. I've already added the optic to mine. And it's, is it, well, I guess I could have just lifted that right on out. I didn't realize that was there. So yeah, I could have lifted that out and it would have laid in flat, but that was my ignorance. I'm gonna put the gun to the side for a moment you're gonna get a handy dandy little cleaning kit that all fits all up in the handle. Closed cell foam on the inside here. And up here, you're going to have your three additional back straps. Now I've changed mine a couple of times. I think even over the course of time that I've photographed this, I've had different back straps on here because it felt really, really good to shoot with the extra large back strap on there that has the little bit of almost beaver tail shape up there. However, when I go to practice dry fire and I go to draw, I don't get my consistent master grip with that because it pushes this angle out so far, it's much more like a Glock at that point. Now, I don't, I'm not one of those people that has a complaint about the Glock grip angle. However, lately I've been carrying a lot more of the Sig P365 and a lot more 1911, 2011 pistols. So they're a little bit flatter back here. So when I go to present, I always want to be able to see my dot, which right now I'm trying to reach around a camera tripod. So that makes it a little bit difficult. And when that was too thick, it was bringing it up in my hand a little bit, but more so, I didn't like the length of pull when I would get to the trigger. Let me go ahead and show that you show you that I have this cleared and safe. There's no ammo anywhere near me. The length of pull is what I didn't like. My reach to the trigger. With the slightly slimmer back strap, I get a more kind of wrapped over grip, kind of like a Sig P365. However, the length of pull where I am accessing the trigger is exactly where I want to be. Now, all that out of the way, up under there is going to be your full instruction manual. 
This was the cover plate that came off of the slide because these do come optics ready if you order it that way. They have an optic ready version and a standard version. They also have the threaded barrel version, is that true? No, that's the other model. Gosh, I already forgot the name of that model, but it's the one that's reminiscent of the SIG 226. And then of course you get the ever so useful trigger lock that I don't know that anyone has actually ever used in history. So the package, you know, it's not really breathtaking or anything, but it's not really supposed to be. It does it make you feel special when you have this packaging? But that's okay. Now, let's get a good look at this. It's funny that people are saying that that brand new SIG P365 fuse is creating a whole new category. A full-size micro-compact, if you will. Skinny, but large. No. RX has been doing this for years. Another funny thing is that as of this year's SHOT Show of 2024, a lot of people have been talking about the Rost Martin RM1C. A huge popularity, big push behind that gun. Well, the Rost Martin is actually built off of the Delta Gen 2 Compact. It's this gun with the features a little bit more rounded off, so you don't have the squarish trigger guard. You don't have the more angular looks going on. You have more standard serrations on the slide instead of these wild kind of triangulated ones or pyramid style. And I don't mean that it's a copy. I mean, they directly paid RX for the design. It is this gun. And right around the same price. That's the other big benefit to this gun is you're going to spend right in the range between four and five hundred dollars for this. They are not expensive at all. Now, for those unaware, it is pronounced RX, like the letters RX, not AREX. I say this because I'm kind of a stickler for this shit. That kind of comes with the territory when you've been doing live television for over a decade. You're kind of pressured by your bosses to make sure that you learn the pronunciation of everything. And you kind of become anal retentive about it. And I also say that because I have watched interviews with the CEO of RX several times. And each and every time he has pronounced the brand RX, not A-Rex. So if that's how he pronounces it, I'm going to respect him by pronouncing it the same way. Now, I'm not saying I don't, I've never mispronounced anything. I most certainly have in my reviews, but it was due to my own ignorance and or lack of research. So, what is RX? RX is a lot like FN in the way that they're a military contract manufacturer of firearms who then take those designs and then scale them back to fit civilian applications and sell them to the general public as well. But every design is a military contract. It's a military design for some army somewhere around the world. And then they'll offer that to the rest of us once they go into production. So I would imagine that the testing is very, very thorough because they're having to meet whatever country's guidelines there are for their military contracts. That's why I've always loved FN. I have... Uh, the FNX tact the FN45 tactical, my apologies for almost saying that incorrectly, and the 509 tactical. I've also had a 509M. I love FN pistols. But this is very similar in how they approach their manufacturing, but it costs less than a comparable Glock. That's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Now, the action is the main thing that sets these apart as well as the profile, the size of this pistol. So instead of a cocked striker, it's about half cocked. So when you're pulling the trigger, you are cocking it, 
compressing the striker spring and then releasing it. Unlike the P320s, it absolutely cannot fire under any situation unless you fully depress the trigger, period. Now, the main reason I bought this is because this is significantly safer to reholster than a standard striker fired pistol. Why is that? Because of this right here. I'm gonna zoom in so that you can see what it is I'm talking about. When I'm pulling the trigger and I'm cocking the striker, the striker indicator is coming back and it's exiting the rear of the slide before dropping. So what I'm able to do is just like a hammer fired pistol, I can thumb back here as I'm holstering. And the, the purpose behind thumbing this is if for some reason I have not looked into my holster and made sure that there is no obstruction, my shirt isn't in the trigger guard or something dumb, if I've made a mistake and that trigger gets snagged on the way in, it's literally gonna poke me in the thumb. Now, it will not fully prevent me from having a negligent discharge. However, I'm gonna feel it. Now, it's not needle sharp, but you feel that poking you in the thumb. And I'm gonna show you what I mean. See that little dent right there? That was from the striker. So, I feel safer pointing this at my manhood as I'm reholstering because I have this back plate covered and I know if something is going wrong. It just makes me feel a bit more secure. So in action, it reminds me a lot of HK. The P7M8, where you see the striker through the back, as well as the VP9, you've got that visual striker indicator back here. So when I let go, you'll see that the striker is not fully retracted. It's at a half cock. I'm going to complete the cocking action here with the trigger. I've reached my wall, and then it's going to release and fire the round. So what I've got here is a 17 plus 1 in a very easy to carry, very easy to shoot, and easy to control package that's lightweight and actually has a pretty damn good trigger. Far and away, a better trigger than any stock Glock made. Far and away better than, well, obviously any Springfield XD. Oh my God, you can't make a comparison about really against anything with those. And I would put it on par with the new Gen 2 of the Smith & Wesson M&Ps. Really, really, really nice. Let me give you a quick example here. Zoom in once again. Double, triple check. Okay. So you do have a trigger shoe safety, just like a Glock. But unlike a Glock, when that's depressed, it does get completely flush with the face of the trigger shoe. You don't feel that little dingus in the pad of your finger after you're shooting four or 500 rounds. And what you end up with is a flat face trigger that when it reaches the wall and goes to break, it's at a 90 degree break. Here's the reset. And I actually let it go too far. Just take a look at this. All right, so here is your trigger pull. You take up a little bit of slack and that's got some weight to it. That's a good two or three pounds right there. You reach a very hard and defined wall about a four pound break. Now, on the reset, it pushes your finger forward. I mean, pushes it. And then once again, very tactile and very audible on that reset. No over travel, no trigger flex that I've ever felt while shooting it. The grip texture, 
very nice, and they're smart. They go all the way up. That's where I need to lock in, and I'm able to lock in right there. And it's one of those textures done smartly where, yeah, you feel that it's textured if you run your skin across it, but it's not like a cheese grater. It's only when you squeeze in and push in to that texture that it becomes grippy. It's flat out perfect in that regard. Okay, perfect may be a bit of a stretch. I feel the shadow systems is the perfect degree of texture. This is not quite as highly texturized. Now you get the exact same texture on the front strap and the entire back strap. No matter which of the back straps you install, all the same way. To install the back straps, you just drive out that friction pin, then you slide this out. It's about a quarter slide, so it unlatches from the slot and then it pulls straight out. Then you drop the next one in, quarter slide up, locks in place, and then you tamp back in the roll pin. Now, I carry mine as a 19 plus one. All of the magazines that you're going to get are 17 rounds. And then you can buy from Global Ordnance for a pretty small charge from what I recall, a plus two base plate. So I'm able to carry this as a 19 plus one. And again, remember the overall size is almost identical to a Glock 19X. So again, the compact length of the slide with a 17 or full size grip length and your dust cover is a Glock 19 size as well. So it's very, very skinny. This is a P365 X macro, basically. It is super slim and I apologize. I'm one of those people that memorizes all of the specs and everything before I do a video. And I'm so distracted because I, I've actually gotten excited to come in here today and do this video because I was discussing this pistol with a few friends of mine recently. And then one went, because we we're in a group chat, he's like, why didn't, why haven't you made a review of it yet? Then I don't have to keep drilling you with question after question. I'm like, yeah, you know what? You're right. So I, I'm kind of in a hurry to sit down here and do this review because I do really, really like this pistol a lot. And I want to get the information out there because very few people have talked about this. Some rather prolific people have. The few that have have been rather prolific. Again, I, I refer to him sometimes. James Reeves over at TFB TV. He has reviewed the RX Delta. Now, the older Deltas, I didn't have much of an interest in. The Gen 2 is what really, really caught my eye. And I, I'm very glad I made the decision that I did. By the way, it is ambidextrous on the slide release slide lock. And it is a reversible extended magazine release. Now, I've seen some people say that they do not like the way that RX chose to do their extended mag release because they're able to push it a little bit too easily. What I don't recall is if they were saying that happened under fire or it happened while holstered. I haven't had an issue either way. That doesn't mean I won't at some point in the future accidentally hit that because it is really easy to hit. I don't have to change my hand position to be able to access it and I love that, but it is reversible so you can make this gun entirely lefty friendly. An X300 will fit on the Picatinny rail nice and easy. And you've got the textured thumb ledges on here as well, which for me, they're not quite as good as the ones that Shadow Systems does because they have a little bit more of a lip and or a little bit more indentation. With this, I feel like I'm actually having to consciously go, where are you? Okay, you're way up there. Let me go reach for you up there. I'm not a fan of that. Plus, the takedown lever is sticking out quite a bit, and there's a sharp. You know that Glock's takedown lever is very rounded on that edge? This one's actually quite sharp. That's the biggest miss for me on this pistol, is the fact that they didn't soften that a little bit. Listen, my thumbs are going up there. 
even if I'm not going into a full forward thumb hold to really access that ledge, under recoil, if I didn't have a good master grip, that would be tearing across my thumb repeatedly under fire, and that would drive me batshit crazy. So, RX, I'd love to see you do something about that. That would be nice. Other than that, I have zero complaints about... No, I have one more complaint. As sessions have gone for dry fire on this, and I have gone to do a quick chamber check, if I'm just doing it in a, in a way where I'm really holding on, I've got the grip that I want to have on the pistol, and I'm just quickly double-checking to be safe... The underside of the slide here, especially where these little protrusions come out from the slide plate, are sharp as hell. And I have caught myself right here and cut the living hell out of myself. Now, I don't know about you, but my old ass with my bad health, I'm on blood thinners. So anything that's going to cut me is a serious issue because I will continue to bleed for hours and hours and hours. I bit my tongue once and I bled for a day and a half. So I don't want things that are going to cut me. It's not that... Oh, he's got delicate little skin. Listen to him why. No, if I get cut, I continue to bleed and I don't want that. So that's an issue. Just as much as if it were giving you slide bite under recoil. That would be an issue that everybody would complain about. Now, I don't have that issue under my master grip, but holding it in a different manner as I'm trying to quickly go through things, you know, the, the fat of the web of your hand might get bunched up there and then that gets snagged and it gets cut and it kind of sucks in that regard. But that's it. Thank you, RX, for having such a wonderful low price on these and making them optics ready and giving them a surprisingly good trigger. And I suppose if I had one more thing to really nitpick about, I think it's a hair oversprung. Man, this has got to be over a 15 pound recoil spring. You really feel the effort you're putting into this to rack the slide, which by the way, I don't care where you're grabbing it from, these serrations are friggin' fantastic. They don't just look really cool, but they work very, very well. But man, you are fighting a hell of a recoil spring and you do get a little bit of muzzle dip when you're trying to recover and get back on target under fast fire. That's it. That's my thoughts on the RX Delta X Gen 2. If you're considering between the RX Delta C, which is the standard compact Glock 19 size, or the L, which is the full size Glock 17 size, or the X, if you're like me, you'll want the X because I like having the additional stability of the larger grip and still maintaining the shorter slide length. In Glocks, I've owned most of the Glocks that have been made, and by far my favorite that was left stock was my 19X. I absolutely loved shooting that gun. That full-length grip with the compact slide that cycled faster and everything else was so fantastic, and I felt so in control of that pistol. You're going to feel the same way with this if you choose to go with the X. Now, remember, whether you go for the big full-sized L or you go for the compact, they're all going to be the super slim. And I've already put up a card that has the specs very, 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 very slim. And that's the whole thing. It's not just the slide, baby. It's the whole thing. In your waistline, you have a slim micro-compact as far as the thickness goes. But in a larger package with a longer sight radius, which with a red dot, that doesn't matter, uh, with the stability of a full-length grip, all the things that you would want for performance in a really easy-to-carry package. That's my thoughts on it. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. And if this gave you information that you found useful, 
please click like and subscribe. Get the word out about my channel and make YouTube friggin' share the video. That would be great. Thanks so much, and I'll see you on the next video.